We place a little seedling in the ground and Mother Nature takes over from there. With the rain that Mother Nature brings us, that little seedling grows and grows and grows and in the end, we get to go harvest. And then that harvest gets shipped to someplace like Bangladesh or somewhere in Central America and ends up on somebody's dinner plate. That's absolutely awesome. At its base, I think farming and feeding people is a noble profession. I certainly take pride in thinking that I'm part of feeding the world. We're responsible for the food supply. There isn't 10 years worth of food and storage. It's up to us to grow a crop every year to feed everyone. There's only so much land in the world. It is what it is, we have what we have, and if we don't take care of our land, the food sustainability will go lower and lower. What's the definition of sustainability? Leaving something better than when you found it, whether that be the soil or the food system or the community. Here's the deal about pulse crops. They allow us to do a rotation as opposed to a monoculture, so that we're not doing wheat after wheat after wheat. And what that really does, it increases the microbial activity in the soil. Pulse crops make our soil healthier all the time. In a direct seed system, having a pulse crop as part of that three or a four or a five year cropping system is really a key component to the management of the soil as you're planting crops every year into that standing stubble. Cropping rotation, no-till farming is huge because you don't disturb the soil. So you leave your good bugs and your earthworms alone, you don't kill them and your microbes. It's actually building your soils because you're keeping all of that organic matter from that plant material on top of the soil. And it allows those microbes to really expand and populate. Adding a pulse crop will increase parameters like soil organic matter. We found that they increase greatly the rate that water moves through the soil and that helps reduce runoff and gets water down to a point where it won't evaporate. We're introducing more biology and more microorganisms and nutrients into the soil with basically no effort on our part, just you know, utilizing a natural cycle in the environment. Pulses have a major component of helping with soil health. It also helps break up the disease cycle. Every plant that is grown is susceptible to some type of disease. And when you can change up the rotation, it really breaks up that disease cycle. There's certain diseases that attack you know, wheat that do not and cannot be hosted by a pulse crop. Well, having pulses in our rotation makes it sustainable so we're not dependent on chemicals for our disease control. We can just have cultural practices of simply growing a different crop. Pulse crops offer us a plant that can fixate atmospheric nitrogen into the soil for the plant to use. So we don't have to apply any nitrogen fertilizer. The production of nitrogen fertilizer is the largest contributor to agricultural greenhouse gases. So it's an energy intensive process to create synthetic fertilizer. With the pulse crop, if you can pull nitrogen straight out of the air and right into the soil, it's, it's more of a closed loop system on the farm. So pulses have this symbiotic relationship with bacteria. And what happens is when their roots go down, that bacteria is going to infect the plant's roots and colonize it. And the plant's roots produce what are called nodules. And that's basically the home where this bacteria is gonna live. Nodules form on the roots of pulse crops and in those nodules are a bacteria called rhizobia. Those rhizobia take nitrogen gas, which is, represents most of the air we breathe, takes that nitrogen gas that's leaked into the soil and converts it to a form that plants can use. Plants cannot use nitrogen gas or we'd never have to fertilize. What they can use is a nitrogen form called ammonium, and that's what the rhizobia convert the nitrogen gas to. Then they take up 
that ammonium. And pulse crops are unique in that they can do this. Oilseed crops can't, cereal crops can't, but pulse crops can, and therefore you don't have to fertilize them with nitrogen. And when the plant is done for the year, we've harvested it and the roots are decaying in the soil, that nitrogen that's left over is available for our next crop. Pulses are one of the most water efficient crops that you can grow. Pulse crops are more shallowly rooted, quite a bit more shallow. Two to three feet is their root depth, where wheat and canola might be more like five or six feet. What that means is that they don't use that deep water, they can save or store that for the next crop. If you try to grow wheat on wheat on canola on wheat, you end up having crop failure because you've used all that deep water. It's a good insurance policy for our farm to have a crop with limited water use. We're not going down and tapping our subsoil every year. Whatever Mother Nature gives us is what we get for the year. Even if we weren't to catch any rain, chances are we'd still have a lentil crop. They're just a drought resistant crop. And that's another factor of their sustainability. Pulse crops do get harvested in a dry form which certainly makes it much less complicated than a lot of other crops. And they can be rehydrated and fractionated, but the bonus is they can store for a long, long time. If a person keeps them in a dry, cool area, which is your cupboard, they usually last, and that means you wouldn't have to throw them away or waste them. I think they estimate that we discard, you know, nearly 26% of all the food that we eat. It's just food waste or it just goes bad in your refrigerator. Pulse crops, they sit on the shelf and they're waiting for you to cook them. So when I used to think about sustainability, I would think only about soil health. But as I've thought more and more about it, sustainability applies to a lot of other things. And one of the most important things is food security. And pulse crops are absolutely fantastic for food security. Dollar for dollar and pound for pound, you can't find a commodity that packs more nutrition, overall nutrition. Pulses are like the Swiss army knife of, of food. I mean, there's a little of everything in there. If you need protein, they've got it. If you need fiber, loaded with fiber, B vitamins, minerals, some of the minerals that, like iron and zinc that often people run low in. They've got vitamin E, vitamin A, antioxidants. I mean, it's almost one size fits all. You can do anything with that tool. It's the wider range of nutritional benefits that you can gain from a single plant product. As we just went through this pandemic, we realized food insecurity is real for a lot of people and we need to provide them reliable, affordable nutrition. And so as we increase uh, our population to 10 billion people by the year 2050, having an affordable source of vegetable protein is going to be key to maintaining life on this planet. So I see pulse crops as part of the sustainability solution because it's really in our best interest to lower carbon emissions. It's in my best interest as a farmer to have stable weather, rainfall that I can depend on, summers that aren't too hot, springs that don't come too early. As a grower, I am certainly concerned about the change in climate. If we disrupt the climate too much, we're not going to have a stable environment to plant into, which means that we won't have consistent yields, which means that possibly people are going to start to go hungry. Carbon neutrality is a goal that's been set forth for farmers. We have uh, ways to go to get there, but it's a good goal to set. Consumers are really going to want us as farmers to work towards that goal. So the primary way that carbon footprint has decreased on my farm is through the introduction of pulse crops. Because now less nitrogen is required in the following year because less water is required. And I see the long-term picture, we really have to look at ways to reduce our costs to the environment. Consumer demand continues to evolve. And now we have more and more consumers that are looking for 
some type of plant-based protein. I don't think there's a more responsible protein source than pulse crops. People want to feel like they're doing their part to promote a healthy planet through their food choices. Eating more pulses is a net gain for the planet. You know, I look at my grandchildren and my children, I ask myself, what can I do? And one thing that's easy to do is consume more pulses in our diet.